All right, welcome everybody. It is June 15th. We're halfway through June. Uh, this is the Hyperledger Technical Oversight Committee call. Uh, as you are probably all aware, I think I've seen you all on the call before, um, but two things that we have to abide by. The first is the antitrust policy that is being displayed on the screen. Uh, the second is our code of conduct, which is linked in the agenda. So for announcements today, we have the standard uh, dev weekly developer newsletter that goes out each Friday. If you have something that you want to include in that newsletter, please uh, leave a comment on the link at the um, that is linked in our agenda. The second announcement that we have is that uh, David has made some substantial updates to the presentation for why contributing to the Hyperledger community will help meet your goals. Uh, so please do take a look at that and review uh, those changes and see if there's anything else that you would like to, to have. Um, I think, you know, David has also volunteered to come back and, um, you know, talk about that again to the TOC. So if we are looking to, um, or if we want David to come back and, and present that again, he's willing to do that. So uh, if you do want to do that, please do let me know and we can uh, make sure to get that on a future agenda. Other announcements that anybody has or would like to make? Okay, um, so this uh, particular agenda is not the latest, but that's okay, um, because I think everybody has seen the, the Sawtooth report come in. Uh, but we do have the Firefly and the Sawtooth report that has come in. Uh, the Firefly report, uh, I don't think has all of the uh, approvals yet. So please, if you haven't, uh, had a chance to look at the Firefly report, please do that. Um, any questions on the Firefly report that we should be discussing today? Okay, um, not seeing any hands. So we did get the Sawtooth report. Rye did submit that. Uh, I believe, Rai, you took the um, the draft that they had put together and submitted that. Is that correct? That's correct. The Google Doc was already in Markdown, so I basically just copy pasted it. Okay. Uh, so just so you know, I mean, I posted some comments about this. I have some questions about the, you know, the claims being made. And you know, it seems to report a lot of activity and stuff. I don't really see it when I look at the insights. And in particular, I posted a comment just a bit earlier. If you go through the list of maintainers, some of them haven't had even a, an interaction with GitHub, GitHub entirely, not, not even talk about Sawtooth in particular. <laughs> so I'm like, how can they be maintainer of Sawtooth if they don't even interact with GitHub in over a year? So I did uh, go through and post a bunch of PRs to adjust the maintainers files a while ago. Uh, I got a lot of pushback from the Sawtooth team. And so I uh, abandoned those PRs. Um, so that's why they're still there. Okay. And you know the report claims that there are people like Cargill involved. I don't see any trace of this. Maybe it's somewhere in another repo I haven't seen. I mean, you know, I'm not. I'm willing to give the benefit of the doubt here, but you know, it's it's a bit puzzling. Yeah, I know. I think the the other uh, challenge that we have with the report at the moment is that there is no sawtooth person who has submitted this report and so they're not going to see the um, comments that are coming in um, so i i think we're going to have to figure out how to get the sawtooth team to take a look at these comments um, because it's going to be very hard for us to merge this with the outstanding comments given our um, 
our uh, process that we have for doing um, the the merge of this pull request. So I, I think that's uh, yeah. Thanks, Rai, for adding these folks. I think that's going to be something that we really need to have um, these folks coming back and providing answers to the questions that people have posed. Um, so it's it's not just your questions. I've seen other questions coming in as well. Um, and so we'll need to get those answers in before we can actually merge this particular report. Yeah, I yeah and you're, you're, you're showing my comment there. I just fundamentally didn't understand several of the things they were talking about here. So I, you know, I agree. I mean, Tracy, the, you know, the whole point of having those reports, right, is to make sure that projects still have a pulse and everything is going reasonably well. If, you know, so thank you, Rai, for bringing up what they had, but I think that alone is not sufficient. If we just go along with this, then we are failing on the whole idea of, you know, making sure this project is still fully functioning. Yeah, I and Arno, I, you know, I did copy, obviously, the TOC on the messages that I sent to the Sawtooth contributors um, last week when I was trying to get this report submitted. Um, I, I have not responded to the latest message about this being a bureaucratic process. Um, because I'm afraid that I'm going to make this more uh, contentious than it needs to be. Um, because I have tried to explain in my past requests why these things are important. Um, at the moment, I'm I'm leaning towards the fact that you know this is our first clue. It feels like it's our first clue. We see uh, we saw it with Burrow. We saw it with URSA when projects did not provide their quarterly reports that something is going wrong, right? That uh, the project is not as healthy as it needs to be. And so um, that's where I'm leaning on responding, but yet I'm a little hesitant to do so just because I feel like this has become somewhat contentious um, and I don't want to make it worse than it already is. Uh, and so would appreciate any kind of, you know, help uh, guidance as to how we how we go about getting this, the sorts of answers that we need to, to get and to you know make sure that the the project is really moving in a direction that that we think it is or that they think it is and um, that if the, it's not that we can get some some sort of you know earlier sort of response than what we did for some of the the past projects where we waited you know six months to a year before we finally took some action on it so um anyway i'm that's where i'm at with this and, and would appreciate any sort of thoughts or guidance around the best way to approach this all right well thanks for the background i mean you know, I think the record shows I'm pretty lenient on those things. I'm not the one to say, oh, yeah, let's just kick them out. But at the same time, I don't think we're asking very much and they have to play their part. So. All right. So hopefully, uh, Rai, by you adding that, we'll, we'll start to get some responses. I will try to um, gently push again to, to get those responses in the Sawtooth Contributors channel, and we'll see where this goes. Um, any other comments or questions on Sawtooth before we move on? Peter? Peter, we can't hear you, even though you've come unmuted. Peter, we cannot hear you. All right, Peter. Um, yeah, if you want to, if you want to put that in the chat, um, we can definitely uh, read it there. Uh, and if you do get your microphone working, that that'll be fine to come back on as well. Um, 
So I think just a, a reminder that the cello report is also due. Um, I think that the last time we sent a reminder was on the 5th. Um, so it's been over a week. Um, Arun, I don't know if you um, have sent a, a further reminder or the, if the job that you have has created an issue for cello. No, Tracy, and then follow up. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, Arun. Um, so for upcoming reports for next week, we do have Besu and Caliper that are due. So we'll, we'll take a look and see uh, if those show up Thursday, next Thursday. So for discussion items today, we have uh, a couple of different discussion items in the task force. Uh, the first is the project annual review. Uh, so I did put together a pull request. It is in draft, um, but appreciate any sort of feedback that people have on this. Um, I don't think we're going to be ready to, to vote on this today because I think there is going to be some uh, commentary, but I did want to get something out there for people to respond to and react to. Um, so I think, yeah, the, the very first thing here is around the timing of the reports and how they relate to the quarterly reports. Um, so that's kind of the, the first question that we have in place. Um, I, I think the, the suggestion by Arun and uh, Stephen is that one of the quarterly reports should be replaced with the annual report. Um, challenging thing for the TOC. I don't think it'll be challenging for the project, but it definitely would be a challenge for the, the TOC because the TOC is going to have to do some work to really dig in deep to these annual uh, reviews to make sure that they are uh, reporting correctly the information uh, and to really help understand the status of the project. So. That would be my only concern and the reason why I suggested that they should be done on some anniversary of either being um, uh, moving to incubation or to graduate it status. Uh, but that's that's kind of I think what what we're what we've got there. Um, so let's stop here and just see about the the timings and uh, whether or not they should. Uh, replace the quarterly reports if other folks have any thoughts or comments on this. Rama? Yeah, uh, as I mentioned the comment here, I uh, I think uh, I may have missed where you mentioned the uh, uh, single uh, uh, like uh, uh, like single week or something, but that's kind of what I was suggesting here. Uh, maybe we could have like a week uh, at some point of the year where all the reviews could be bunched together. I mean, if you think about uh, reviews of uh, people that you know, happen in the organization you work for, it's like uh, they don't, it's not in a staggered manner. I think it's just more efficient to uh, do them all in uh, one particular cycle at one particular time. I think it'll reduce the load on, on us. And also, uh, if you are reviewing all the projects at around the same time, it allows us to uh, relate the projects to each other, see how they um, depend on each other, how they complement each other, and so on. So maybe that that might be a more efficient way of doing things. Yeah, Rama. So I think right now I don't and I don't remember the exact number of projects that we have, but let's say it's somewhere in the range of fifteen. If mm -hmm. we're doing fifteen annual reviews at the same time we've got 11 toc members that means at least four people are going to have to be doing two of the deep dives at the same time given the the way that we have them um and then all of us will have to be you know obviously responding to comments asking our questions about these annual reports um i do think that it'll be a very um you know, I think it'll take a lot more time than we would expect. Uh, you know, during a, a week or two week process of of trying to to go through all of these. Um, so yeah, th I mean that's that's my biggest concern is just the amount of time and effort it will take if we put them all at one time. 
Yeah, that's true. I agree with that. I think though, if uh, uh, if it is like bunched together, it doesn't have to be one week. Maybe it's like two weeks. I'd say fifteen projects, maybe two to three weeks. Then um, it just gives people a bit more focus because otherwise uh, you have reviews coming up like almost every month, right? Every month, couple of months, and people have to take some time out to to work on that. Other thoughts on timing? I remember this is uh, this is everybody on the TOC's responsibility. So I would hope everybody has a thought on what they would like to do as far as spending time on these. Bobby, I like the idea of having them present to us at least once a year. And with that, it would have to be toggled through the year because you can't have all the, you know, 15 or 14 projects reporting all at the same time. Um, and I don't know how you'd pick that on the calendar, but I think that that not just having to fill out a, a form, but actually having to present to the TOC and show up and discuss the project um, would make it um, <clears throat> more relevant to what's going on and give us a better insight as to what's happening with the project. Yeah, makes sense. Thanks, Bobby. Uh, David? I agree with Bobby. Um, I would also say that I would have a much easier time digesting the deep dive reports if they came like once a month rather than all at once. And I think I'd spend more time on each one rather than just trying to knock them out if they came all at once. All right, thanks. I'm not sure if others are in the same sort of position, but Indy Aries might fit together or Aries and Oncreds might fit together and be combined. So maybe we can think about um, that to reduce the, the sheer number. Um, so that might make it e a little easier. I don't know if other projects have that similar relationship. So Stephen, it would still be two separate annual reports, but then at the same time. Yeah, sorry, yes. The so that the actual presentation, I totally agree with the idea of you know having it uh, uh, a bellwether in the community that people are that are focused on and they show up to the meeting or or are invited to the meeting at least, and and that specific maintainers are involved in the meeting. Um, but I just think that could be combined for some of the projects, like some of the projects can have their meetings combined. Okay, thanks for the clarification. Anyone else in favor of um, putting them all at the same time? Jim, thumbs up is yes, you think all at the same time. I have to admit to be a bit torn about that one. Arun, you're against, was that the X? You guys are using these uh, thumbs up and Xs and I'm not sure what they mean. Right, I think I agree um, that having all the reports come at once may be too much tedious work for everyone. Um, but then we need a strategy of how we distribute. It could be like in the quarter one, we designate four projects in quarter two, the next set of four projects or it also allows uh, the TOC um, designates, uh, designated members to go um, in detail and come back with the report. All right, thanks, Arun. Okay, so I, I feel like most people are leaning towards the, let's separate them. Uh, and we've got maybe one and a half to two and a half people who might be in favor of doing them all at once. Um, so let's uh, let's at this point maybe move forward with the at different times. Um, 
and then we'll see how that works and see if we need to adjust or change that as, as we move forward. All right, so then uh, next comment is, Right, if you wouldn't mind moving us forward in the. All right. Um, yeah, Arno, go ahead. Yes, yeah, sorry, Tracy. But before we move on, so yeah. if you don't do all at once, how, over how long will it take to go through all the reports, basically? Isn't that like within a quarter or so we see them all anyway? Or is it over the year? I don't know. Um, so I haven't looked at the actual when things have gone to incubation or, or when they um, have graduated. That was the original sort of thought I had is that they'd, it'd be on some anniversary. Um, so specifically the anniversary of going to incubation would allow us to, you know, that after a year kind of see where they're at, see if they're ready to move to a graduated status, see um, if they're meeting their charter, that sort of thing, right? Um, and then a year after they move to graduate, it would be, you know, a, a look at kind of how, how has the growth been? Um, are they making any progress towards the releases that they're doing, um, making progress towards their roadmap or, or things like that? Um, so my thought was to somewhat distribute them over the year or no. Um, but I don't actually know if by looking at when things have gone incubated or graduated, if that would be a true statement or not true statement. Um, so I, I obviously want to try to distribute as much as we can uh, over the year. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know how that works out for sure. All right, I understand. But I was thinking maybe there's a middle ground there, which is to try to get them fairly close, fairly quickly all after another, but not all at the same time either. Gotcha, gotcha. So because I think the thinking... point is valid, but I'm just afraid of the workload if we really ask <laughs> them all at the same one time. I think that's the problem, right? So maybe there's a middle ground where we kind of try to have them all come in one after the other in a fairly short period of time, but not quite the same time. Anyway, thanks. Uh, yeah, no, that's that's interesting, Arno. Um, are you thinking distribute it over one quarter? Are you thinking distribute it over two quarters? What what kind of distribution are you thinking then? Yeah, if we something try to like a them? quarter. I don't something like a quarter that would make you know something like this probably. Because I think Rama's point is good that you know we we if we have them all fresh in our mind, it helps see maybe if there's some you know how they compare and when and and so on. But um, so from that point of view, if you stretch that over six months, probably it is not good. It doesn't work. Then you might as well forget that. But uh, if it's over a quarter, probably still have enough brain cells to remember that. <laughs> not okay. my old age. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh understand. So maybe maybe we replace one of the quarters, Q1 or Q2, whatever that happens to be with the annual report. Um, instead of right. trying to distribute over Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. Yeah, something like that. All right. Thanks, Arno. Might be worth thinking about. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely worth thinking about. Stephen? Yeah, so I'm just thinking through some logistics of what it could be. So, yeah, if you go with one quarter, um, we're saying that a TOC member would be, um, would engage with the, with the project. It could be that, you know, the teams use one of their regular reports to talk about it. The TOC member participates in that. They prepare the quarterly report that has some additional information to collect. And then at that, they also get scheduled to appear in a TOC meeting. And maybe we have up to two, um, two of them per TOC meeting during that quarter. Does that flow seem right so that they, the you know, there's some publicity across Hyperledger that, oh, this is the annual report quarter. So there can be some publicity about that. 
um, each of the teams is is or each of the projects is encouraged to dedicate one of their meetings, at least a segment of one of their meetings to cover this. Uh, what gets said and and the TOC member attends it to hear the interactions of of the team uh, of the project team. How's that for a logistics of it? I don't know if that made sense on the fly, but did to in my head. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think that makes some sense, Stephen. Um, assuming that the projects have uh, a meeting at least uh, once. But, yeah, like big red, uh, flag. I, <laughs> big red flag if they're not having a meeting every month. It, this is true. This is true. Um, but yeah, I, I think that makes some sense in my head as well, Stephen, uh, what you did say. I'll add a comment to your uh, uh, to that PR. Okay, sounds good. Um, so I I think then that will definitely be a, a change that we can make to the the PR to reflect kind of a different sort of schedule that we put together. Um, and you know maybe we'll actually think about what that actually looks like as far as the true process, so that uh, we can add a little bit more detail and information into the PR so that we we're understanding what we're all agreeing to before we actually agree to it. Any other uh, comments on that before we move on to the next comment here? Peter? I just wanted to test my microphone. Yes, it works great. Okay, okay. sorry, I, I missed part of this conversation because I had to reboot the I'll try to catch up. Okay, no worries, Peter. Um, so we're just, well, we were talking about timing um, and whether or not it makes sense to do it within a single quarter instead of distributed across the year um, is where we've ended up. Um, so that's something that we'll take back to the, the PR and uh, get added into the PR. All right, so this next question, yes, archiving does mean end of life, Rama. I will update that uh, PR to reflect that, um, to really make sure that it fits in. Um, Steven, yes, I will laugh at your comment. Uh, that was a good one. Um, I did write it in a weird way, and so I think some of this did end up getting repeated. So I will make sure to uh, remove that repeat. All right, let's see what we've got here. Uh, to evaluate against the set goal, the project should be asked to set the annual goal for when they apply to enter a Hyperledger Foundation. Um, so Arun, I think, um, you know, I said this in response to something that Arno said earlier, but my thought was that when, when you do go to incubation, there is that proposal and there's some information in there about kind of what the, what the charter of the project is. Um, and so I think there is some goals that kind of are being set there, um, you know, but we can definitely be more specific about what it is that we're um, asking for in the incubation proposal to, to make sure that people understand that this is something that they will be evaluated against as we, um, you know, go through the annual review cycle. And then the, the second comment here, we do have the other pull requests that we will take a look at as we continue this meeting. So next on the agenda, uh, another stage, next stage. So I, I think I'm gonna leave this as another stage because I know that uh, we're gonna be looking at the project life cycle and uh, we'll see how that all works out as to whether or not we uh, do think that it's going to be different in some way or shape or form. Um, but for now, I think we'll leave this as another stage. Arun, comments on that? Yeah, I understand. So um, I think with the approach that the projects could move back and forth depending on number of votes, that makes sense. Yeah, OK. Uh, let's see. Okay, so this is about 
Um, can you scroll up just a little bit, Ray? This is about, um, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, this uh, this comment about the at least two thirds of the TOC members agreed to continue the project at its current stage, or if we don't agree to continue. So this is a change uh, if you think about it, because I think right now all of our decisions are at least um, a majority of people have agreed to move it to the next stage, whatever that stage is, whether it's incubated, graduated, um, dormant, end of life, deprecate it, whatever that stage is, right? So I think this is a really good thing for us to discuss. And so Rama, I'm going to hand it off to you to, to talk through your comments and, and see what your thoughts are here. Sure, I, I was just making a simple point. I mean, uh, your first line, so line 60 says at least two thirds of the TOC members agreed to continue to the project at the current stage. I think if the in the review, if the uh, maintainers have made a pitch to move to the next stage, like going from incubation to graduated, then that should be the first thing that the TOC should be debating. And if they uh, if that is not uh, on the table, then they should decide what you've shared on line 60. That, that's all I was trying to say. Gotcha, Rama. So I, I was thinking that if the TOC thinks that they should move like from incubate it to graduate it, there's actually a process, right, to move to graduate it that um, we should follow and that we shouldn't change that process from what it is today. So I think we're in agreement if I'm if I'm understanding what, what you're saying. Sure, thanks. Um, but other thoughts on this two thirds, because that is a, a change to um, to what we currently do today. So I want to want to make sure that people are in agreement with that statement, uh, or if we should just move it back to the simple majority. Hart. So yeah, Tracy. Um, I guess. My question here would be what happens if the TOC members can't agree to do anything? Because if, if we can't sort of agree to continue, if we don't have the votes for that, but we don't have the votes to change, what happens? It was mostly just a wording thing. You mean there's a there's another else in there that I didn't take care of is what you're saying? Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, I don't know so the answer to We that. will discuss with you <laughs> yeah. what might be the next stage, right? Well, you know, then you have to vote on, you have to get two thirds to be the next stage, right? Or, or what the stage might be. Uh, so, well, that's, that's actually an interesting one, Hart, because I'm not changing the way in which we decide to move to deprecate it or dormant. Um, so that would still just be a 50 or a simple majority um what if, what if three fifths of the people want to continue the current project and two fifths want to move it to end of life or deprecate it right then we're we're sort of stuck in a limbo right yes 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 uh, we're, we we stuck in limbo. Anything. and then there's it's since it requires two thirds to continue the project is sort of in an undefined state right yeah so um, I think whatever, you know, whatever we want is fine as long as it's it's consistent and we, we don't end up with a project that we don't know what the state is in, right? Because here, if a project is not voted, doesn't have enough votes to continue, but doesn't have enough votes to be deprecated, what state is it in? Yeah, yeah, no, that makes sense, makes sense. So sorry to be pedantic. Um, no, no, it's it's good to be pedantic, Hart, and I appreciate the the call out here because um, you know I could see that happening to us, and then we'd be like, uh, "What do we do now?" <laughs> um, okay, so that's making me think that we need to just change that back to the simple majority vote that we have, because I I believe if we do that, then we wouldn't ever run into a problem where. Although I think there still is a second else if, right? Um, which is deciding what the next state is. So I'll think about this heart and try and come up with a, 
uh, wording that will resolve the concern that you've brought up. So you could have one, you could have some fraction vote to not continue the project at its current stage. And that would solve the, the logical issue, I think. Because then if, if there's no consensus, the project just sort of stays. Okay. All right. Uh, next item here, then. Yeah, that could be a good way of handling that, Rama. Um, I don't think I necessarily want to um, define who has to do the annual review because we don't define who has to do the quarterly review. Um, but I do think that your comment about who knowing who to contact is probably a good sort of thing to to um, think through. Would Rama, if we change this to be something uh, about and informing the TOC who that person would be, would that resolve the concern that you have? Yeah, I think it would. Okay. All right, is there another comment that we have? Okay, this is an interesting one, Rama, and I'd love to discuss uh, whether or not we think one person should be responsible or uh, uh, two people should be responsible for this. Thoughts on the responsible member, Peter? Peter, your microphone stopped working again. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So I think we could do with the current number of projects. We could do multiple TOC members per project, but then I would also put some formula in there to make sure that if the number of projects triples, then we come up with something else so that the load on the TLC members don't get too much. But at, with the current number of projects, I think it is doable easily to have more than one member. All right, Mr. Peter, Rama. Uh, just keep in mind that uh, the TLC members who are on that project cannot review the same project, right? So we have to allocate this properly. Okay, so that's another discussion that we should have. Um, there is currently no sort of exception process for somebody who happens to be a TOC member who, uh, okay, I'll give a specific example. I get Fabric's report came up and Dave's name was the next one on the list of people to do the um, review because I was, uh, we had the round, round robin sort of thing. Um, would we be okay with Dave being the one who provides information or would we say we should skip Dave and uh, move on to the next person? Peter? I think uh, to me, it would be okay because at the end of the day, there's uh, no additional benefit. I would say, David, we just have more context than compared to if I was doing it. So I don't, I don't think there's a conflict of interest necessarily, but uh, also I'm very open to not thinking that way because uh, I'm also a TOC member who is also a maintainer of a project, so I'm not going to try and manipulate those rules in that way. All right, thanks, Peter. Aru? Thanks, Tracy. So um, just to clarify, there is no conflict of interest aspect uh, to what I'm going to say. It's more about uh, looking into report more objectively than um, trying to be 
um, like trying to miss out certain aspects that otherwise could have not been missed out. Um, so I'm in favor of having somebody outside the project, having a review of um, how it's happening. That also helps us understand how the project report has been, if, if the project report is effective enough for somebody who is not involved in the project to understand what's happening in the project. Now, um, the other aspect which we can also consider um, is like, let's say if um, if we were to just go with the round robin without having to worry about who the person is, um, the favorable point to that um, debate is uh, like we just propose that we'll have multiple TOC members, not just one person. So then we can look into having a mix of people from within the project and outside the project. So those are my comments on both for and against. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Rama. Uh, I don't cover the points I wanted to make, so I leave it. All right. Hart. Okay. So I would ideally like to see someone who is not affiliated with the project do these kind of reviews. Um, you know, even today we've seen a quarterly report where perhaps a project exaggerated their community contributions a little bit. And, you know, there, there's no reason that, that that couldn't necessarily happen with these, these more in-depth reports. Uh, but more importantly, you know, I think it's an opportunity for, you know, TOC members to, to see and learn about other projects. If you're going to spend the time doing one of these, why not, you know, learn about another project, you know, see what's going on and you know maybe you learn something maybe they learn something you know I, I think it's just a good learning opportunity all right thanks hart so it seems we're in favor of having somebody who's not affiliated with project do the um be the toc member responsible for working through the project annual review i can make that update to reflect that as well all right, any other comments that we have on this particular PR? Uh, okay, yeah, I'll fix some typos. <laughs> All right, that looks like it. All right, so I think, you know, I've got some really great information from folks. I appreciate the, the feedback and the comments. I will make sure to update this uh, and so look for a uh, non-draftable requests to come in um, to see if there's as resolved the, the concerns that we've brought up here. Um, so I, I know we're looking at um, time. I'm thinking we're probably not going to get to the task force today, Rama. Um, we might have to push that off next week, but we'll see where we, we get and, and decide that. Um, but let's take a look at the encourage projects to set annual re or annual goals um, PR that Arun has drafted as well. Um, so I, this is added to the project incubation entry considerations around goal setting. Um, so this is um, this is kind of in regards to the making sure that during the annual review process that people can uh, comment on how they've uh, been meeting their and or their goals that have been set. So any thoughts? that people have on this particular PR as they're reading it. Makes sense to me. Yep. All right. Peter? I agree with it. And uh, I just wanted to add maybe we could standardize it in the form of one of those markdown files in the repos. I always liked the habit of a lot of open source projects to have a roadmap.md. So maybe we could be more specific and say you could have a roadmap.md in your project and uh, describe your plans for the year there. All right. Thanks, Peter. Any other thoughts on this particular pull request? All 
All right, so Arun, maybe you can make a, a suggestion. Um, and also, I don't know what the um, the proposal form looks like, but we might want to make sure, as Peter mentioned, that we do update if there's like any questions that might exist for um, for project incubation entry. Yeah, Arun. Right. So I don't know about the roadmap.md file in the repositories, but um, I can come up with the structure of how project teams can set their codes, like an example or maybe guidelines on how, what that looks like um, by next Tuesday, I think. Okay. Sounds good. And speaking of templates, uh, Stephen, I did see a comment from you somewhere about having a template for the annual reviews. Um, I don't know where that um, comment was, but I will also take a look and see about creating a, a potential template for people to complete for the annual reviews. Sounds good. All right. So then I think the, the last item on our agenda is just this task force uh, badging life cycle. Rama, I don't know if 10 minutes is enough time uh, for us to have this discussion, um, or if we should wait till the next go around. So let me know what you think about um, timing for this. Um, I think it's up to you and the, the team. Um, mind starting if you want, or what I can say is, uh, I, I'm sorry, I just uh, I finished making some notes earlier today. If you can go to the uh, the wiki, I let me look at the where we have all of the task force brainstorming going on. So I created and added something to the to the wiki page. Let me send you the link. I think it's under community task forces. There we go. Yeah, that's the one. So uh, Bobby had created this page. It's kind of a skeleton page. So I just made some uh, notes here. So it's caveat that uh, I haven't actually discussed it with anybody. I, I looked at your uh, description of the task force and thanks, it was really comprehensive. I, I read through the different uh, links that you had there. So uh, I think would, uh, I think I would really benefit from having some discussions with people. And I hope that uh, uh, what I had here would uh, start the discussions and uh, then we could uh, get around to um, uh, converging on decisions and making some recommendations. So um, this page, uh, what I have here is I, I just, uh, at the beginning, I captured the, the goals that uh, you stated in the in the task force. And the goal is actually quite, uh, quite simple. How do we uh, accurately and comprehensively represent the state of a hyperledger project's life cycle so that we can make uh, accurate assessments about a project's health and also make uh, the right decisions about uh, uh, how it should proceed, like which includes both uh, uh, graduating to a higher stage or uh, maybe getting demoted to a to a lower stage and and so on. So, and uh, th there are two broad approaches that you articulated. I'm not sure if the the two are necessarily uh, completely independent, but broadly speaking, one approach is we just take the existing project lifecycle diagram and uh, we see what it is lacking uh, in order to make these uh, assessments and uh, we try and uh, update it. And the other approach is that there is, uh, we use some kind of a badging system whereby uh, we make a, we, we create a list of badges, each representing some kind of, uh, some set of attributes or uh, some kind of a, a quality control uh, measure that each project will aspire to. And once it meets that uh, the criteria, then the uh, uh, it will be awarded a badge. And when a project has sufficient number of badges, it can be we can move it from one stage to the other. I, I believe that was the thinking. So I actually would like to uh, get some uh, uh, info from some of the veterans here on the TOC. There was a long discussion I see that happened in 2020 and 21, where uh, uh, you were discussing uh, badging. And uh, I have some links to that uh, here. 
so again let's copy it from your uh, from the issue uh, and there were a list of badges that were uh, recommended and also a process whereby uh, each project would uh, uh, acquire those badges and uh, that process was uh, roughly speaking each uh, the maintainer of a project would self certify that pro that project uh, as possessing a given badge and that could trigger a discussion with the project maintainers and uh, folks in the hyperledger community other contributors and if somebody had a, a dispute over that then they could bring it up before the toc which would rule on whether or not the badge should stay or should be removed and uh, a badge could either be something that comes up for uh, periodic renewal like uh, let's say the project is uh, undergoing an annual review it could be uh, part of the review process could be does the project live up to the uh, the badges that it currently possesses if not uh, maybe they should be removed and there are some badges that a project would uh, just acquire once and uh, it would be deemed to have met uh, like like the infrastructure badge which just basically says that the project should have a, a proper github repository and, uh, and and the really the basic stuff uh, so uh, just wanted to ask i mean uh, because i see that the last uh, and those pages updated were in 21 and i saw messages from tracy and arno and all and i think it was dano who created the pages but he's not on the toc anymore so what was the uh, uh what was the uh, thinking there and uh, why did the discussion around badges stop i just like would like to get an idea uh rama I I think if I recall uh, the discussions, we couldn't necessarily come to any agreement on exactly what the badges would be, how they'd be created, if they were objective enough versus whether they were subjective, um, you know, what it would take for somebody to actually do kind of the self reporting of that. Um, and so I think, you know, as we look at things like the annual review process, you know, does do the badges start to play a, a bigger role in that? Um, so I just think at the time we just didn't have a good mechanism for how we would move forward with doing badging. Um, and, you know, there was no sort of strong agreement one way or the other. And so really the, the conversation was dropped. And so I think that's why it's worthwhile to have the conversation uh, again, and see if there's, you know, one, a different set of um, folks, obviously, that are part of the TOC now um, that have different views or different ideas about ways that this might work for our projects. Um, so I, I don't know that I have any really great answer as to why we didn't move forward, other than we just didn't have any strong movement to do so. Oh, th thanks for that, Tracy. Uh, that makes sense. I think I have a I get my tentative uh, conclusions, uh, which uh, you know, I, I don't want to uh, put them as recommendations. Rather, I would like to read them as discussion points for now. Uh, that uh, uh, badges uh, and the continual evaluation, revaluation will put a fair amount of overhead on the on the TUC. So we have to be uh, maybe careful with that if we do uh, choose that option. Uh, on the uh, on the other hand, uh, projects, I mean, there are some things uh, that project would benefit from from having a badge, like, for example, whether or not it meets adequate, it is an adequate uh, test coverage, maybe even badge around whether it's been up to date with its uh, security vulnerability management, whether, and uh, especially the, the document that uh, uh, Dave uh, drafted on uh, project best practices, I think we could probably extract some um, uh, broad criteria that could we could uh, label as badges and then could give to the, the project. So maybe we can discuss that. Uh, one other major thing I was thinking of, if you can just go up a little uh, to I, uh, I went, if you can scroll up a little, uh, I looked at the, yeah, a little further above. Yeah, yeah the comparison of the Hyperledger and Linux Foundation uh, networking life cycle. So uh, you'd link to that, and uh, I thought that was quite uh, interesting. I was just doing a comparison between the two life cycles. So I just uh, they did not have this diagram at the right. I just made the diagram based on the table that they had, and uh, it looks slightly simpler than uh, the hyperledger diagram. But 
but not really. I mean, it's just that uh, I think the hyperledger diagram, uh, there are some states are distinguished from others based on purely based on project activity and not just based on uh, the, the project's uh, maturity. So I think that's the only difference. Other than that, the uh, uh, lessons we can get from the uh, from the latter, from the LNF uh, life cycle is that they have quite clearly articulated uh, 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 criteria for uh, for all the reviews, both in the forward direction and the reverse direction. So I think clearly we should have uh, something like something like that, even if we choose not to have the the badges. And I think uh, the uh, having a project life cycle. I mean, we should have that. Uh, the, the the original question, I think, was framed in an either or way, but I don't think that's necessarily how we should go about it. Like, we should not just say that a project should have uh, badges and not have, and we shouldn't be concerned about the life cycle. I think the life cycle should still be there because it tells us at what stage uh, a project is in. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, on, on top of that, if we can uh, reason about uh, uh, what kind of badges, uh, if any, we want to give the project, then we can we can have the discussion. That that's my tentative thoughts for me. All right. Um, so Rama, this is really great information that you um, and Bobby have put together here. I think you know we should definitely take a look at that. Um, I. I agree that I don't think these things are an either or type of situation. I think we can do both um, of these particular items. Uh, so I'm I'm in favor of you know seeing what it would look like if we do um, modify our project lifecycle as well as um, taking a look at the the different badging that might be available. And I really like the idea of looking at the project best practices document that they've put together. And seeing if there's particular badges that we could come up with based on on that particular document. So Bobby? Um, yeah, Tracy, thank you for saying that because that's exactly where I was going um, with the documentation task force. One of the things that um, we're doing is trying to incorporate, you know, those not, well badges or suggestions to get your documentation in certain places and move to the next uh, cycle. So again, we're we're working with the labs to get that in there um, and. I don't think that uh, it's, again, I think best practices and badging work hand in hand um, and that, that, that now that they've, that task force has come up with their recommendations, we're taking that in, in the documentation and user guide section and, and, and running with that and trying to get that information um, available on the spots where people would be looking for it. So, you know, if you want to get one of those badges for your project, what does that look like and what does that mean? We're trying to fill in those gaps. Great, thanks for that, Bobby. All right, so I see that we are at time. Um, so Rama, I think this has been a really great start to this particular task force. And I would recommend folks take a look at the particular task force document to add any sort of thoughts or comments to that. I think for next week, we are back to the security uh, task force to close that one out. And then um, we'll also take a look and see where we are with the annual review PR. Hey Tracy, so I heard, um, so, so, so Hart presented the proposal to the uh, working group yesterday on the open SSL, but um, I don't think so they'll be ready with the comments by next week. Uh, the, their meetings run like bi-weekly, so maybe it will be good if we have this after one more week. Okay, uh, so I will see what the next task force is. I'll play put that in the TOC channel so that whoever is uh, up for that can prepare. Um, so we will then, I guess, talk again next week and I will again uh, comment on the TOC channel about the next task force. All right, thanks everybody. Thank, Thank you. you, bye. <laughs>